Good evening, Des Moines. Welcome to the Doc and Lefty program here in the always lovely, hospitable, and warm WebcastOneLive.com studios on the Skywalk here in uh, lovely downtown Des Moines. My name is Lefty, a.k.a. Blake Lubinus, and with me as always, my number one fella, the host of the most, Dr. Patrick Petrosh. Doc, what's up? Not much. I'm really excited to announce that we actually have a live website. A live website. A live website, DocAndLefty.com. We that finally ne- got that up and going. Yeah, Yes, uh, so you want to check that out. Now, we are inches, inches and minutes, inches, inches away from being able to actually put some content up on there rather than just uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the YouTube clips or the, the videos that we, whatever they do here. I'm, I'm just the guy that gabs in the mic. I don't know anything about all the technical side of things, but we've got that going. And neither do I. <laughs> right, that, that, that's absolutely right. Now, we, uh, you want to check that out. It's Doc and Lefty. Lefty, D-O-C, D-O-C, N, the letter N, lefty.com. You want to uh, make sure to check that out. And especially once that gets going week to week, uh, uh, Doc and I will be, we'll be blogging, we'll be writing some st- whatever comes to mind, we'll be posting whatever we think is interesting or, or politically topical. But anyway, it's um, we get, might as well get on to the rest of the show. So, Doc, I'm very excited. I'm Because excited we too. have our very first super friend of the show, State Senator Brad Zahn. Senator, how's it going? What's up? Well, I'm a little tired because li- I just uh, ran the Des Moines Marathon with my daughter this last weekend. Well, that's just ter- terrific. Hey, Lefty, don't you think that we should be in shape enough to run a marathon you'd, with Brad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, I could drive we, behind you. We, you'd <laughs> think so. You'd think so, but uh, but not quite. I, I, in fact, I ran a couple of miles this morning, but then that oh. was uh, two miles too many. Ah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> trying to trying to get uh, trying to get back into to, to fighting weight because I feel like I it's not necessarily my my ideas, my policies, or my f- political philosophy that keeps me one step behind the doctors that I'm not in shape. <laughs> and so I feel like sound body, sound mind, and I'll be able to keep up with him on a, on a weekly basis here, much as the uh, the Republicans, well, we'll get to that in we'll, a second. We'll get to that hey, in a little it's, bit. it's a great a political stress reliever to run. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> no matter know. what side of the aisle you're on. Well, you know, and I, what I have noticed, when I was on D.C., what I noticed is uh, everybody ran, everybody Right. Really? It didn't matter how old you were. You're down on the track. Right. You talk about term limits. Did yeah. they always run all the time? <laughs> yes, they run all the time. We need to have more of those. I'm telling you that. I didn't realize and, that a super friend status came with a super sense of humor, Doc. Yes, absolutely. That's a good sense of humor. And so uh, I know that when it, I would drive around out in the out in the neighborhood, and there would be Brad. Sometimes his, his son would be running with him. Yeah. So you know, I know uh, Brandstat runs. You know, he gets out and he does his exercise and. So, you know, every president I've ever known runs. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things that's good. Yeah. So what, what's your take on the shutdown, Brad? How do you think it's going to pan out for Republicans overall? And how much do you think it's only going to impact our state politics here? Well, I, I don't know that it'll impact our state politics because I think that is one thing that we do successful uh, every year in the state house, regardless if the Democrats or the Republicans are in charge. And right now, as you know, we have split uh power in both chambers but one thing we do do is we come up with a budget every year and uh, we do the best we can to come up with a balanced budget so i don't know that you know i was i I don't understand that people are upset about what's going on nationally i think i've said in this program before heck i think we ought to throw all of them out of office all right now Uh, republicans and democrats frank's Um, telling us that we have a call so let's go to our caller Okay. We have we have Junior Frank in there doing it, so hopefully he won't goof this up. Caller, you are on Doc and Lefty. What do you got to say? Gentlemen, good evening, good evening, good evening. What I have to say, I have been talking about for a long time as far as this government shutdown. The fact is, is that if you ran your household exactly the way the government ran, run their government, the Republicans and the Democrats, your household would shut down straight up. Now, how is that going to affect the Republicans? Lefty, I told you about a couple months ago. Oh, this is Benji. This is our good friend Benji. All right. Believe it, my friend. You better believe it. But here's the dealio. Is it from now until 2014 election? That is an eternity. America, they're going to forget about it in the, in the next couple of weeks and on to health care. 
So you think Americans just have a short short attention span, and by the time the 2014 elections come around, the, the Republicans I, will be forgiven? I'm not going to say they're going to be forgiven. I'm going to say the issue that the Republicans are being blamed for the government shutdown, I think their tactics weren't the best and well thought out of. But what's going to end up happening is the American people are going to be so sick of Obamacare and the monumental flop that it is that – they're going to forget about the government shutdown that happened in November 2013. All right. Well, Brad, October, what do you have October, th- November 2013. What do you that's think about what do, you, what do you think about that, Brad? Well, I certainly agree. What, is it Benjamin that's on the phone? Ben, Benji, yes, Benji, yeah. Yeah, yep. Benji. I agree with what you're saying. Uh, I, you know, I'm not buying out that it's the Republicans' fault. I think it's a dysfunction with both parties uh, and a lack of leadership in Washington, D.C., and the reason why, but I would agree with you. I think that people are going to move on from this. I do not think that that benefited our country any. And uh, I think someone told me the other day that uh, the United States Congress, some based on some Gallup poll, is rated uh, lower than having hemorrhoids. And uh, so I think that people are just dissatisfied what's going on out there. I agree with you that you know it's going to be about the economy, and it's certainly going to be about if they get this uh, Obamacare thing, you know, working at least uh, so people could uh, see what that's all about. So I, I would have to agree with Benji and, and uh, you know, and, and most importantly, any organization that be your family or business could not operate the way that people in Washington, D.C. do. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Benji, for calling in. We appreciate your input. Uh, stay you. tuned. You're going to st- listen to the rest of the show? Absolutely. All right, great. I, I, I can't wait to hear what Les has to say about this one. Oh, yes. We're, we're waiting with bated yet. breath. <laughs> so. We'll see you later. All right. Thank you. Well, ben, Benji, is a, he's another good friend of the show um, and was a, was a special co-host here a few weeks, uh, about a little over a month ago when Doc was on the road. And I certainly do remember his point about it being a political eternity. The one thing that I would, I would uh, point out is that if the Republicans do this again and again and again, I feel like they're going to exp- they should probably be expecting the same result because remember we didn't fix anything. We funded no. the government till January and we extended the debt ceiling till February. And, and so when and we those- passed a twenty billion dollar budget with three billion dollars yeah. for Mitch McConnell, now that's not that's not conservative principles. Mm-hmm. That's not leadership. That's selling out to the highest. Bet. And Tom Latham is already getting Tom Latham, one of the one of the more establishment. I'll grant you one of the more institutional Republicans, best friends with John Boehner, is already getting primary uh, primary threats from the right in Iowa come 2014. And if you want a guaranteed, we've seen it all over the state, especially in this district with Polk County up for grabs with the really the only conservative pockets of this district being the the western suburbs where Senator Zahn is from and some of the uh, some of the other places um, uh, south of uh, south of Des Moines down to Madison, Winter, or Madison, Marion County, those kinds of places. If you go let if you go right of Tom Latham in 2014, the Republicans will lose this seat. Senator, what do you think about that? Well, first of all, I respectfully disagree with your points. Uh, I don't think that the blame is to the Republicans or the Democrats. I I think they're both responsible. The reason why the general public thinks it's the Republicans' fault is because the liberal media bias uh, that's been going on. Uh, But to answer your question about uh, Congressman Latham, I have not heard of anyone that's thinking about running against him. Uh, obviously, I know uh, Congressman Latham as well as I think I know all of them in Washington, D.C. And it's not trying to pick on one or the other. I just think everybody's sick of it. I mean, everybody's made these promises. This this is a service to our country. This is not supposed to be a lifetime opportunity to make you a wealthy person to go to Washington, D.C. And this cuts both ways. And I think the disfa- dissatisfaction from the American people, certainly all the people I talked to uh, from here in central Iowa, they're just sick of the same old stuff. And I think it's time for changes. And uh, so, you know, in regards to a more conservative person, I mean, yeah, I was definitely disappointed uh, when he voted to strap my children with another over a trillion dollars worth of debt. But I'm disappointed with all of them out there. And I think the whole fight out there was what was going on with the next generation. I mean, someday somebody, and believe me, 
Blake, the Republicans and the Democrats are equally responsible for the death that's going on in this country. But someday, we've got to make some tough... You know, they, they, the people we mm -hmm. elect, have to make some tough decisions on what's going on. Does it, does it mean anything to you, or does it does it... Do you find it interesting at all that everyone is angry, everyone is upset, There's the Congress has got the lowest approval rating ever, and yet incumbency is 90%. What does that mean? I, I experienced it. Mm -hmm. The average ordinary person has to be a very wealthy person to run for United States Congress. We've gotten away from the average ordinary person being able to represent us in Washington, D.C. I mean, I just got buried in money that came from outside of the PACs and everything because I was not an incumbent. I sat down when I ran for Congress with PACs, and I've said, you know, I'll just give you an example, the credit unions. I said, Leonard Boswell has voted against every bill that would benefit or help your credit unions grow. But they said, no, we got a policy. The policy is, and it's the same with all the PACs that are out there, that we don't get involved when there's an, a person running against an incumbent, regardless if they're a Republican or Democrat. And so the system is broken, so I'm just busting my rear end trying to raise money. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the National Democratic Party comes in and dumps, you know, $300,000 into this race the two weeks before the, you know, Well, that, race but course. that's politics. Then, then, I, know, I, yeah. I understand that, but I'm trying to make a point here. Yeah. You can't, the average ordinary person or someone from the outside, it's virtually impossible to knock out these incumbents. Now, I do believe that the next election is going to be throw all the bums out of office. So I think there's a lot of incumbents, Democratic and Republican, that are very vulnerable to be getting thrown out of office just because people are sick and tired of what's going on in Washington, D.C. All right. Well, we have a super friend of the show, Brad Zahn, with us tonight. <laughs> I don't know if that's... And, uh, well, I don't deserve that. <laughs> we're going to be back right after this uh, break. Um, uh, stay with us. We want to thank you for tuning in. We'll be back right after the break. Petrosian Associates, how can I help you? Petrosian Associates will provide you with a friendly, caring, and confidential place to find help for mental health concerns. We are ready for your call. Our doctor, Dr. J. Patrick Petrosh, provides a full range of psychiatric services for children, adolescents, and adults in a forthright and informative manner while maintaining a casual, comfortable, and relaxed atmosphere. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Welcome back, everybody. It looks like we got the snow sirens out in the uh, in the the Skywalk yes. area. Is there snow coming now? Well, there's uh, well, you, not. You, not right not right this minute. Not I'm this sure, minute. but you know right. we're we're in this nice cozy studio with uh, with the, de the the donkey and the elephant behind us. So we don't have to worry about any snow. <laughs> we're here with our um, this is Lefty Doc and Lefty uh, every Tuesday from six thirty to seven thirty. We certainly want to thank uh, Ed Fallon and the Fallon Forum and uh, and really a, a shout out give big shout out to them. Great program. Listen to it all the time and. And uh, really, um, I'm enjoying this new uh, uh, new format and the new the new schedule an yep. awful lot. And, and for a liberal, uh, for a whack job liberal, Ed's uh, Ed's always willing to have a conservative on show to talk to. Call that talk about amazing. talk about damning with faint praise, my friend. But uh, <laughs> um, but no, we're we're here with uh, with with super friend of the show, uh, State Senator Brad Zahn, and we're talking about the government shutdown. And Brad, I just I wanted to. Uh, I ask you a few things to take issue with this idea. Every time the conservatives get in trouble, their idea, uh, apparently conservatives have never had a bad idea in their entire life. Every conserv every idea has been hand wrapped in gold plated gold down from the heavens into the minds of conservatives because every time a conservative gets in trouble or every time they have a cockamamie plan to shut down the government to protest a duly passed and found constitutional piece of legislation. And remember, let's not all let's not all forget that's what caused the shutdown in the first place. 
It must be the liberal media's fault. They took a pounding. Th- the reason that the, the Republicans capitulated, the reason they gave up every demand that they had, every is there single a question one in here, counselor? Every single one <laughs> is because of the. Uh, and I'm not. I didn't say I was going to ask a question. You're I'm just, taking, you, oh, I thought I'm you taking said you issue with this. I'm taking taking issue with this last point. Oh. Every single every, they gave up, and every single demand except like income verification or something that was already in the law, they blame the, the, the blame the liberal media. And I gotta wonder until this, it wasn't our fault, and it wasn't our bad plan and and political suicide. It was the liberal. I wonder if, if that, until that narrative is sort of exhausted, are we going to keep seeing face plants by the Republican Party over things like this? Well, I know you don't agree all, with anything that I said, you know, but uh, uh, I just, it, well, that's what I, you're is frustrated interesting Well, like me. a lot of people are, I think, that are out there. Uh, the people that I know uh, that share this, you know, uh, they were very upset and had high emotion on the shutdown mm-hmm. was more about uh, the debt ceiling is what it was more about. I mean, when are we going to say, I mean, they really don't have a plan. I, I agree that, you know, I guess it's a good first step that they're all going to get together here in the next month or two yeah, before February and try to figure some things out. They're not going to do it. Um, it's just going to be the same but the, thing. You know, I mean, here it's the 23rd of October. Yep. And why don't we do this right now? Why don't you sit right where he's at and you try to get on to the Obamacare website and you tell me what your success rate is? Oh, I've already there's signed a, up. There's a oh, you're signed up 100. Yeah. percent I'm signed up 100. I'm, I've got on there 100. And how long did that take you to do that? Once, well, once it was up, it okay. took me about five minutes. Okay. It took well, me two weeks to get on there. Okay. Don't uh, let me. Right. I'm not, I don't want to to tell tales out of school. Right. It took. It was down for a long okay. time. Once it got up there, it was really really easy. The only thing that was difficult is because I'm self employed. Right. I haven't done my 2013 taxes yet. I don't know how much money I made. Okay. Well, here th- the point I'm trying to make here is there's some problems with Obamacare. Of course, I didn't support it. I don't like it. I think it's going to be detrimental when we get in this argument another time mm-hmm. uh, to our health care system in the United States. Uh, but I do agree with you. The Supreme Court made a decision, and there was some attempts to try to uh, connect the government shutdown with trying to defund Obamacare. That was. Uh, the, but the okay. fact of the matter is, is both parties are to blame for the shutdown. We have not operated with a budget for I don't know how many years. I find that is the responsibility of both parties. Mm-hmm. I find now. Granted that President Obama did release, I think, a first budget in several years this last year, but nothing's done on it. You know, it just it's frustrating to me. I'm sitting out here in the cheap seats like we all are here that they can't get their job done out there in Washington, D.C. Do you think do you think that a part of that and I won't make this a partisan point, but because I think there are sacred cows on either side. But do you think that a part of that is because of those sacred cows where the the Democrats will not tolerate any mention of of entitlement reform and the republic and the Republicans keep coming back to the table with uh, and they and they won't talk about any sort of revenue increase. And so they're so right then and there and you need both. Simpson Bowles right. said you needed both. Right. And when Paul Ryan comes out of the budget. It's a no-go. When President Obama comes out of the budget, it's a no-go. So where's the middle? Well, there's no leadership in Washington, D.C. I mean, it took Terry Branstead, Governor Branstead, to come together with Mike Gronstall Mm -hmm. and Paulson to come up with some of these compromises that were done this year. That takes leadership, and there's no leadership in the White House right now. And and I'm not trying to pick it. I've always been raised to respect the President of the United States. I don't think he's doing a good job as President of the United States working with everybody. Listen, they're both to blame, and I agree with what you just said, is that they're both so damn set in stone that they won't compromise on some of this stuff. But let's take a look specifically at the Republican Party. The Republican Party has had the ability to send a budget up the ladder and haven't. That is, as you, as Lefty has pointed out more than one time, that's their constitutional responsibility. And the way that we actually got a budget up there were these new fiscal hawks coming after them. It wasn't just Tea Partiers doing this. There is an entire group of fiscal conservatives who are sick and tired of being relegated to the to the side. You know, the, the fiscal conservatives are always asked for money, but when they say we want these things, fiscal conservatism, some rationality to this, they don't get it. It was brought on by that pressure. And then when it made it to the Senate, you had, even though he is a Tea Party favorite, you have a person in Ted Cruz who said, this is what we're going to do. That's really what's going on. Now, you can say we face planted, and, and I would buy that because 
we caved. And you can blame, Lefty has a point, you can blame, blame liberal media all day long. The fact of the matter is the Republicans are the ones that caved. That's what's driving these poll numbers down. Not the fact that they did it, because at the beginning, it was the Republicans had a slightly better um, had slightly better poll numbers. It was only at the end when they caved that the poll numbers went ding. No, All right? that's not true. They the, walls, met, the, at the, the very first day, it was a slight thing about how the Democrats were just slightly more to blame for this whole thing. As time went on, and as the Republicans more and more defected from the fiscal conservatism, you could judge that going down. The NBC Wall Street Journal poll came out a week before the end of the shutdown. And that poll went through the Capitol and lit everybody's pants on fire. And the Republicans realized that if they kept doing this, they were going to, uh, be, it was going to be a huge problem for them going forward. And after all of this went over, because remember, no single Tea Party person voted for uh for to end the shutdown and to extend the debt ceiling not a single one the tea party caucus held ranks and the tea party now is down to its lowest approval ratings versus its disapproval since they came into being in 2010 so what does that in 2009 what does that say well it, first of all they had a peak in, two, in 2012 and it's natural to fall down second of all these people are sending a message Listen, at some point, we're going to start doing something, and you're going to have to start dealing with us. What they really see is this big lurch to the left over the last 50 years uh, towards socialism. That's really how they look at it, and they're starting to do something. Now, we're going to be back right after the break. We're going to let Brad talk for a little bit. <laughs> I'm enjoying <laughs> and, it. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back right after uh, this break. You're listening to Doc and Lefty on webcast1live.com. <laughs> From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is Lefty the Doc and Lefty. Thanks for sticking around for the first couple of segments. We're here with our good friend, uh, Senator Brad Zahn, who is, uh, is, is, uh, is still... Well, probably not still working out the, the, the kinks from doing the marathon, but I mean, how, <laughs> how, I mean, it was, it was a little bit, it was a, it was a beautiful day for it. Yes, it, was it was a gorgeous day for it. And you're running with your daughter. Uh -huh. Um, so how, I mean, how did that day, what was your, your, uh, your, your training getting up into the marathon? I mean, did you just go and do it. You're, you're a really good a guy who's in really good shape, but no, I feel like it was probably no, a not a guy thing. that's in, the, in really good shape, but I do run it often. Mm -hmm. I hate to admit because this is not a good training routine for anyone to run a marathon, but maybe two times a week, uh, is what I get the opportunity. And I do it pretty consistent throughout the year. Uh, my daughter was in town. I've ran at least 20 marathons. And I just kind of get out there and gut it out. Now, mm -hmm. I will tell you, if any, if you talk to anybody that runs a marathon, I mean, I, heck, I bet you 50% or 60% of it would be mental. Uh, but once you hit mile number 18, and That's I what flew everybody says, through yeah. 18 miles. Uh, it was great to be with my daughter from Minneapolis. But once you hit 18, phew, it's really tough. Everybody, everybody says uh, that the 18th mile is one those last eight miles. You can't even yeah. barely stand it. I, I got, but I got to ask you um, because I'm a, I'm a little bit, I'm a few years younger than you, and I've got to tell you that when I go even, even a few miles more than what I'm used to, my hips and my knees yeah. and everything just start, and I'm carrying some extra weights so that doesn't help. But I mean, how were you able to kind of? Uh, is it just the constant running that's kept you sort of? 
just in you know kind of in balance with yourself or i've just been really blessed i've never had any knee problems or ankle problems or back problems i think that a lot of it has to do with your stride mm -hmm. i did lose 20 pounds in preparation for this run i mean like my talk doctor told me he says just like imagine carrying 20 pounds of sugar on your back and so i think that helps a lot but I just tell you, everybody hits the wall mm -hmm. anywhere from 18 to 20 miles and, uh, you know, into the route, race route. And as long as you're in a moving forward, uh, the rest of the races, which I do, because I don't run 100% of the time, I kind of have a deal. I ran 18 miles with maybe a couple, two or three water uh, stops, ran very, I think, I, I cut 40 minutes off my time last year. Uh, but uh, once you get there, then I pretty much – Every water station, which they're every mile, mm -hmm. I walk at least one block. Uh, and then just I don't like to drink and run at the same time. And right. so uh, the weather was perfect. It was absolute perfect temperature, no wind. How big was uh, it? How, uh, how many runners do you think? Well, I've been told there was 10,000 runners total for the Des Moines Marathon. Now, we take wow. off with the half marathon people as well. We go probably, I'd say, three or four miles with them as well. But it's just a gorgeous route through south of Grand Drake, mm -hmm. and then we will finish up on Waterworks and around Gray's Lake. So, wow, that uh, is beautiful. That's, a, that's, just, a, good, was, that's you know, a good route. It was just really, I, was, oh. I think that's probably going to be my last one, uh, just because I kind of did it because of the Boston uh, bombing that went on. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know, just said, ah, gosh dang it. So I just, I just turned 51, and uh, I did it. I thought 50 would be my last one. And then my father passed away, and a very good friend of mine, Brad Payton, passed away. So I raised money for uh, the Shining City Foundation, which is uh, an orphanage uh, organization in China. Well, right. that, that is absolutely that, fantastic. That kind of the, determination is what we need in our lawmakers in Washington, oh, Doc. Absolutely. That's why I wish you would have made it, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you now, tried. Thank you so much, Pat. Well, I will tell you, I'm getting text bombed by, a lot of, by our last segment, a lot of people listening in. Uh, a couple of people, uh, they they agree with with Brad that, that it doesn't really matter who's at fault at this point. It's just that we need to fix the problem. Our kids are the ones that are going to be paying for this. Uh, somebody pointed out that uh, the debt has tripled under uh, under Obama and his administration, and how is that going to be paid? Well, it's so large we can't grow our, our way out of it. Uh, somebody, and this is a direct question for you, they wanted to know what – for for Blake, they wanted to know what um, what uh, insurance company you signed up for, and did you look to see if your doctors and hospitals were on it? Um, well, no, I haven't actually got. I haven't bought a plan through the exchange yet. Okay, but I, I because I already have insurance for myself through through a, um, a private business. carrier. Yeah. Um, but uh, I but I signed but and so I wasn't planning on changing it because it's really right now it's it's relatively affordable and my the plan that I have is compliant with the Affordable Care Act so I don't have to I don't have to change if I don't want to I was curious to see if there were plans on there that were comparable I didn't get that far like I said because there is a pretty lengthy income reporting portion of the website saying that they wanted W-2s, they want, you know, to make sure, to see if you qualify for any of the subsidies. And because I didn't have my 2012 taxes from last year and I'm self-employed, I don't have th that kind of, I had to estimate. And so I figured it might as, I don't want to say anything that's untrue about my finances well, on the bet. website. Well, what and, I, and so I stopped before I got to the marketplace itself. What I found interesting was that President Obama's answer to the glitches with the uh, with the the website. Now I'm going to tell you a lot of conservatives are attacking you know the glitch on the website and everything else. Listen, this is what happens when you have anything go live. Doesn't matter what it is. I mean, Brad's in in uh, IT now, selling that stuff. He understands. But here's the but here's what he said. Well, you'll just have to sign up for insurance the old fashioned way. You'll have to go talk to an insurance agent and do this and do that. And I'm sitting there thinking. Honest to goodness, that's your answer to this. You just got done spending almost four hundred million dollars, two hundred million of which was supposed to actually be the physical process of this. Why did it cost four hundred million? Right, to only have five hundred thousand people get on World of Warcraft. All right, I'm going to bring up gaming now. <laughs> Blizzard went live in November of two thousand four, and they had almost six million people sign up that day for World of Warcraft. Not a single glitch, not a single problem. Six million people wow. in 24 hours. Right? Well, that's, that's the and way. I, and that is the difference between a government website yeah. and a private industry. Well, website. they, but they had, they had pretty simple. They had private 
consultants the entire way, though. They didn't. They weren't doing this just with their own people, either. So they but they were well, using. Yeah, but we shipped two hundred million to Canada. They, they were using outdated technology and uh, or outdated equipment, and also I guess a lot of these developers were, were coming up with with uh, red flags, and uh, and so so there's really no. I'm not trying to apologize for for the website issue Good. at but all. You're just trying to make an excuse that Obama isn't at fault for that. I'm just which saying, in fact he is. I'm just I'm just he's always at fault. He's personally <laughs> at fault. No, I'm just I'm just saying that it's it's pretty weak. So I mean. I find it fascinating that I mean, first we had to we had to stop it because it was socialism. Then, oh, I guess it's not socialism because it got passed through the Congress. Obama got re- reelected running on it, and it was found constitutional by the he Supreme Court. He did not Court. get elected that was solely a, for running on Obamacare. That was a he major policy. That was a major part of his platform, and he was, hey, no, he, if you he wanted, barely if you talked wanted, about it. The person who talked to, about it was was uh, was, was Mitt Romney. Yeah, if Mitt, because, if Mitt he, Romney, because our own conservatives attacked Mitt Romney. The, Mitt second, Romney the, the second thing that got him elected was Mitt Romney was a terrible candidate. Mitt Romney came out and said, the first thing I'm going to do, day one, number number one, one first thing. But one, one, everybody, first thing, the very first thing that he said he's going to do is defund Obamacare, repeal it. He's going to sign it immediately. And but he, that was and so, how, how that but that was out so hypocritical. How that worked out for Romney him. Because Romneycare is exactly like Obamacare. How is, oh, I'm going to repeal that because it's shitty for the, well, rats. Because it's bad for the country. So the conservatives said. The, so the conservatives said, "Hey, we know that if President Obama gets reelected, he'll veto every chance of repealing Obamacare." Okay, fine. But this conservative that we're probably going to vote for promised that he was going to. We're not going to vote Romney, for him in first enough of all, numbers. Mitt, Mitt Romney's not a conservative. The conservatives stay home. He's a big flaming lefty. How? I, I mean, address that, my that, address my point. You had one candidate who said he's going to defund <laughs> Obamacare, repeal it, get rid of it, a hundred percent. Yet another guy said that it's great for the country that they're going. He's going. He's running on it, and it's fine. He won't repeal it. And he'll veto every piece of uh, legislation that comes across well, his desk. And that the second guy, President Obama, got reelected. The bottom line is, is far more complicated than just I ran with Obamacare. 11 million conservatives stayed home and didn't vote. If they had showed up and voted, they could have. Mitt Romney alienated his conservative base over and over. That's why he so lost. So Obamacare must but not have been that big of a deal for them. Obamacare was a giant deal, but you can't believe a guy who sat there and set up the framework for Obamacare. Doc, I love you, but you, the, you, your logic, you're not making any sense to me. I am. Romney care and Obamacare are the same thing. If you have somebody that says, hey, listen, I think that what you're doing is terrible, but I was did exactly the same thing, that's called hypocrisy. Conservatives don't like hypocrisy, and that's exactly what sunk them. You know, absolutely. Now, on that one, I have to take a break. I got to shut the lefty off, which every <laughs> once in a while I get to do. Every once in a while, I'm the guy that gets to gotcha. We're going to be back after the break. We're going to talk about local politics and let, let the room cool off. So, <laughs> I'm all not right. Hot. And maybe we'll let Brad talk I'm again next hot. time. All right. Thanks for joining us. We have a special friend of the show, uh, Brad Zahn, with, listening uh, or with us today. Please keep listening. <laughs> The guy on the left, he's got me all frazzled, you know. And uh, it's a good thing I outweigh him by 100 pounds, I'm telling you that. Uh, Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back right after this break. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. (laughs) Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. From Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. Just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do. And if we guarantee it's going to be a good experience for you or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're going to do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee. All of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. 
You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the, the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going, though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Hey, welcome back, everybody. You know what? Every once in a while, they catch me napping, and here with the door closed because the sirens are going off, I can't hear uh, our producer give me the uh, the cue, but you got to see me in my element, which is lounging around talking about nothing, <laughs> which is well, always we're, a, we're, a well, great thing to do. Uh, uh, well, let's let's move let's move on a little bit. There's a couple of, a couple of texts I got. One was, oh, geez, I have my glasses on. One was... Uh, that Lefty really hadn't signed up and gone through the process yet. And if it was difficult for him and confusing, which that's that's kind of the gist he got, what about the the elderly and stuff? Well, no, that, that wasn't the – first of all, I did, so I don't, I don't know. But you don't the, actually have insurance yet. No, I have, well, I have my own insurance. Yeah. I, I have my own policy. Well, that, I'm just telling you what the comment was. Well, the don't, com don't well, the com all the, well no, I'm not getting defensive. The comment was wrong. I All have right. actually done it. All right. And I and I signed and I signed up and I went through the whole thing. I stopped All right. because I don't have my income verified yet. Okay. And that's a big issue. Now, uh, we can finally figure I are now after a year our producer has finally showed us how we can look at chat. Oh, good. Well, here. The best comment is from Benji. <laughs> because he calls President Obama Teflon Obama. That's pretty cool. Teflon yeah, Obama, yeah, Slick Willie. Get, the Democrats get away with it. They get away with that stuff. Um, another conservative of his, um, uh, they, they contend you can't reach across the aisle for the Democrats because they always wind up just doing whatever they want to do and there's no compromise. I have a tendency to, to believe that as well. That's been my experience politically. Um, now, I'm sure, now, Lefty is an exception to this because he really is fairly reasonable for a lefty. Now, we're going to go on to local politics here. And today, I think it's, isn't it today, Brad, where the the special election at District 33, isn't that what That is supposed? correct. Now, I haven't seen any results yet. So well, what, what was your take well, on that whole thing? I mean, because Michael Young, he's a Republican. He's a manager of a store. He was a Marine. He's a Somali veteran mm -hmm. versus a lawyer uh, who is a Des Moines City Councilman and a uh, political activist in a strongly Democratic state. And the last time they had an election, uh, the Democrats broke for Democrats three to or two to one at least. Okay. So what do you do? You think Michael had a, has a chance at this? Well, I, first of all, I want to finish up with the last uh, conversation we had. I'd like all your listeners to get on to The Daily Show and see what Jon Stewart said about Obamacare uh, and the and the implementation of that. It's just, it's real, but it is kind of funny. Uh, secondly, I want to say hello to the very special people in my life. And uh, I know that there's a very special fans out there that are probably listening of this show. And I just want to say thank you. And it's an honor to be on this show, both of you. But with that said, um, I wanted to, the election is going to be obviously an uphill battle. Uh, for the Republican on the South Side. Now, I was born and raised on the South Side, and I know the people over there. 
You know, they're blue collar. Mm -hmm. But you know what? They t there's a lot of pro-lifers out there. Uh, I think the key to that election is whoever worked the hardest. And they had a very limited window of opportunity to do that. Uh, I know that I recorded a, a, a robocall, which a lot of people don't like, uh, for Michael. I know Michael. He's served our country. Uh, I really don't know uh, the other guy that's running. Uh, but, you know, we'll see what happens. And I would say that if if Michael is successful tonight, that's going to be a huge, maybe the biggest upset uh, ever in the history of the South Side. So uh, I, I think who knows what's going to happen. And maybe this will be a great way to kind of measure what the feeling of the general populace is tonight based on, you know, the shutdown and, and everything going on a couple weeks ago. Do you think that, uh, well, I mean, that's that's an interesting take on it. I wonder, though, I mean, because you, you had said at the top of the show that you don't think that it's going to ripple into low, I, state politics as much. I kind of wonder, I mean, these local elections are so much more about who you know and personality, more so than the D or the R behind your name. And I and I, I haven't studied this election at all. It's I have my office is on Southeast Fourteenth Street, so I'm already in the thick of it. But uh, you kind of you kind of wonder if you've got one guy who's been around for a while, and I think this isn't isn't the Democrat. He's a little older. He's a little more established, and maybe that's going to what be what comes out. But the biggest problem that we have that you and I agree on a hundred percent is this uh this party uh uh this this party where you, you if you're a Dem you don't ever vote for a republican ever 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 and the same on the republican side where you can't you, there's no you don't see the people picking votes off right and i you know i don't know i'm gonna get myself in trouble here but i have always voted for the right person mm -hmm. uh and before i've gotten really involved with this uh the greatest thing about city councils and school boards and they don't have a, a letter behind the name. And uh, I have voted for Democrats mm -hmm. uh, in the past, and, and uh, sometimes I've, I've learned to regret it. But, uh, but I, I really think it would be really awesome if we could get people uh, to vote for the right person or who they think would re represent them. But, you know, it's going to be an uphill battle. But this election's got an R, D, or an I behind it. There wasn't probably any independence, but so it's going to be an uphill battle. And unfortunately, a lot of people just kind of go in and, you know, these smaller elections, lower turnout elections. I mean, signs matter. Yep. I mean, you'll just yep. have name recognition, connections, yep. you know, that kind of stuff. But I don't think that anybody really had time to put together a really good campaign because this is a special election. Right. And I got to tell you, um, just just from my own personal experience. If you're a store owner, if you're a small business person, you got a heck of a lot better advantage yeah. than being a lawyer. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. absolutely. That's why I, I agree with that. My, my biggest uh, political liability is that uh, that ESQ that I insist on having behind my name. Yeah. Yeah. I spent a lot of money on that, darn it. Yeah. Well, what, what, what's, well now this will make your heart happy then. Oh, good. Uh, virtually everybody else that's ro running for city council across across the, the Des Moines area Moine, you know, I'll tune all that stuff. Yeah. Everybody who's running, with the exception of Michael Young, and there's another person I can't remember his name, but they're all lawyers. Love they're, it. Yeah, they're all lawyers running. I mean, we got problems. Like, well, we wait, got well, problems. And Shakespeare's Shakespeare said it best. I think he said it in Macbeth. First thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. You got to. You know? <laughs> you, got, you got to get rid of us, although I don't know how you would probate all of our states without us. Yeah, well, but that would we be good for you, Blake, because that'll state. get all those people busier, so they won't have time to do law. Oh, see, I need, law I, practice. That's a good. That's a good point. I need. <laughs> I, we if need they more, get elected, we need more lawyers in the state house to kind of ease the competitive balance on my side of town. There you that's, go. that's a good point. Hey, lawyers, go and run for elected office <laughs> and leave the business part of it to me. That's Please I love don't. it. Well, I just looked to see if there's any preliminary results. There's no preliminary results today, and I think the polls close at eight or nine. 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 They have okay. nine. They said. Okay. So I'm hoping, uh, hoping Michael Young, a lot of luck. I met him at the at the Polk County picnic, uh -huh. yep. and I saw Brad out there yep. too. And uh, um, I was really impressed, you know, how he put it together. And I thought, uh, you know, for a guy right out of the shoot, no political experience, to try to take an active part in a in basically in an uphill fight because that is so heavily Democratic. There's, I mean, he's he's doomed, uh -huh. you know. But at least he had the cojones to go up there and run a very good campaign. Well, and, so, re and remember, even if you don't win, if you're the if you're a, a person in a down district, even if you don't win, if you if you run a competent, well managed campaign and lose, it's a lot that is a lot more for you in the long run than if you run a sloppy one and win because you'll just get picked off the next time. 
Yeah, absolutely. Now, out in Urbandale, my neck of the woods, um, uh, the mayor race is, is uh, Mayor Andewig. He's running on a post. Uh, but the city council, strangely enough, has three people running for two seats, basically, because Ron Pogue, uh, who's also a lawyer, um, is, uh, is the incumbent, and I doubt he's putting together anything. And Rob Elgin, who I don't know at all, I've never met him, and Dave Russell, who I've known since I was knee-high to a short duck, are running for John Forbes' old seat. And so the one thing they all have in common is they're all shysters. And the second thing is the kind of in common is they, uh, what? Whoa. Well, hold on. Lawyers, Whoa. not necessarily shysters, but, you know, that's all lawyers are shysters. That is that's, not true. Rob a, Elgin is that's not a, an attorney. That, not on, here to defend a, him. He oh, yeah, you're a, right. He is a manager. I can't read my own writing. He's an IT guy. And he used to be a police, police officer. That is correct. Out, that's right. It's a, that's a big boy. Boy, oh, boy. Yeah, I can't. I, okay, hold but, on. I walk well, that one back there. Well, over here being offended by the term shyster, which is what we used to call him <laughs> back in the old days. But anyway, my apologies to Rob for lumping him in with the shyster group. I take that back. And Dave the thing they have, Russell is not a shyster. And neither is uh, the other the incumbent uh, city Oh, to see now, Ra- Sorry. Ra- being politically correct. No, I know these people. Well, I know, I know Dave, too. Yeah. You know, he, yeah. he grew Dave's up Dave's a great guy. I'm yeah, supporting like Dave. Uh, he is a great man. I appointed him to uh, the uh, Board of Adjustment, and he moved his way up to uh, the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, and he's a great guy. I know Rob Elgin. If you remember, if you've been around Des Moines for the while, uh Rob's dad was the zoo director many years ago. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. That was out there, and, and yep. he was with the Urbandale Police Department, yep. so he I was actually, an outstanding I, police officer for I, Urbandale. I take that back. I knew Rob Elgin when I was a kid, and Rob and I went to the same camp, Bortel's camp down there, yep. a couple of times, so that was pretty good. Anyway, the other thing they all have in common besides, well, I guess they don't have anything in common except they've all been invited to come on to our show so that our listeners can be introduced to them. Oh, well, that's fantastic. So that, that's pretty good. So I, I stepped back. I offended our super friend of the show by, by using the term shyster. Hey, it's I, a, have, I, I have successfully offended a liberal and a conservative. Hey, hey, no, 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 no. We, as lo- we can use that word. Is that well, it? That's our <laughs> word. That's our word. All First, right. Well, one thing I want to just clarify <laughs> is I've never made the connection with shyster and attorneys. I always thought shyster was someone that steals from people. Now, you could make that correlation <laughs> about oh, that. Yeah, well, but I'm, I'm not one of my friends. I just, betrayed, I just betrayed yeah. my, uh, yeah. my, 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 myself there. Man, I didn't uh, feel like I was going to caught out on that one. Oh, yeah. I but, steal from people all the time. Yes. Yes, we, we know that. Yep. Uh, speaking of stealing, now nah, I'm going to skip, skip that one. In Clive, Mike McCoy is running. He's the incumbent. Eric Klein uh, is... Uh, in, he used to be in the military. He's currently in in sales, and he's running for election. But I don't know if any of them are running opposed or not. Uh, there is someone that's running. Only reason why I know that I know Eric, and I know Mike very well. I'm supporting both of them. Not that it really matters, but uh, there is a third person that's running, and I do not know who that person is. All right. So out of Urbandale, is there anybody you're supporting, or are you supporting all three? Um, you know, uh, I want someone. Uh, that will start watching the bottom line in the city of Urbandale. And this is reflective in a lot of communities. Every time I turn around, my taxes are going up. What the cities have decided or that they've, you can see a trend going is that our water bills are getting more and more expensive yes. because the cities have been a, allowed to tack on all these different fees on the water bill. So to answer your question is whoever re, you know, reigns in the spending – which I worked very hard when I was mayor to get us down to the lowest tax rate and run that city like a business. Uh, I think they've made the current council and mayor has made some uh, bad decisions. Uh, I know they'll say, well, we dropped the tax rate 10 or 8 cents or whatever. Well, what in reality, what the people don't understand is that the rollback, the benefit to the rollback is actually outweighed that little five cents or whatever the heck it is in Urbandale they did. So to answer your question is I'm looking for someone that'll be conservative, not talking the conservative, you know, social, because it really doesn't belong in city politics, but someone that's conservative there. And so, uh, I mean, I'm supporting, uh, 
I was born Dave Russell wholeheartedly, and, and I certainly know Rob Elgin. I think he would make, make a good city council member as well. Yeah, well, I, I will tell you, I, now I don't know Rob as an adult, but I can tell you, I, I really like uh, Dave. I have his sign in my yard. Yeah. Uh, we've known each other, honestly, since I was knee high to a short right. duck. Um, I, I think he came into my dad's office in 1978 or 79. Yeah. And so I've known him my whole life. He's a super great guy, and I support him 110%. So the, you think that these three guys, whoever whoever the two gets elected, you think the city's going to be in good hands? Uh, I, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm supporting the two people that are non-incumbents. Uh, I think, okay. and, I, and I know the other person that's running, but like I said, I'm not going to repeat what I said. I'm very frustrated about some of the decisions that Urbanville okay. City Council's done. All right. Um, now, one of the things is uh, out in our district, we lost a uh, representative seat that Scott Rackard held for years and years. Who has the Republicans put up anybody? Uh, there, that is being worked on right now. I actually was on the phone with someone that is considering running. Uh, I think that it's going to be, uh, and I know John very well. John's a wonderful man, uh, Main Street business owner in Urbandale. But he votes along the party line in the Capitol. And that's what people, he doesn't want everybody to know that, but that's what happens. And I mean, a great example is he voted against the property tax reduction. And I could go on and on. Um, but to answer your question is there is going to be an opponent. And from what I gather is that'll probably be one of the number one, number five, one to five targeted seats in the state of Iowa because that district is a Republican district. You bet. Um, now, maybe Pat Petroch. It could be Pat. Could, <laughs> what, what would you think if I shaved my my beard and got respectable again? I, you know, it would be a throwback. It would be it would be vintage Doc and Lefty. <laughs> it would be vintage Doc and Lefty. Now, <laughs> now we're going to be back right after the break. We have a friend of the show, Brad Zahn, in with us today. Um, uh, we'll be back right after the break. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I want to thank all of our sponsors. They allow us to keep our show going. I like to thank the people that sponsor the station because it keeps the lights on. We'll be back right after this break. You're listening to Doc and Lefty. Petroche and Associates will provide you with a friendly, caring, and confidential place to find help for mental health concerns. We are ready for your call. We are proud to work with military personnel and their families. Our doctor, Dr. J. Patrick Petroche, provides a full range of psychiatric services for children, adolescents, and adults in a forthright and informative manner while maintaining a casual, comfortable, and relaxed atmosphere. Our licensed mental health therapists provide individual counseling to children, adolescents, and adults, including couples and marital counseling. Visit our website at BertrochianAssociates.com for more information or call 515-334-9484. Our offices are located at 5525 Meredith Drive in Des Moines, just east of Skate North off Merle Hay Road. Isn't it time to talk to someone? Take care of yourself and your family. Contact Petroche and Associates. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for uh, sticking around until the final segment. I like to call this the uh, get out of jail free segment because in five minutes I get to leave you conservatives behind for a whole week. And that's the, it's like it's like church when you're a little kid. You get to go home, take off of your uncomfortable clothes, shake them out a little bit, and then I'll see y'all back next week. Well, and, actually, I, what I think it's like for you what's that? is trying to lose weight, and then you get to sneak into the ice cream store, and that already <laughs> sees you. It's really a big treat for you to come on, and then you have to go back and lose weight the rest of the week. So. That's probably true. Say, you know, I don't know if you if you had anything uh, set up, but the one question that I wanted to talk to you specifically about because you're you are about uh, ordinary people doing. Uh, uh, getting involved and being active in their political process. It seems like the, the folks, the folks, the, the folks are, they, they want a third party. No, no, no more than any time, any other time in, in American history, maybe except for when Teddy Roosevelt was, was running on the bull moose back in the teens, had the American people seem to, and, and Iowans want a third party, an independent candidate or something like that. Where do you think is a room in our system right now, or do you think that one of the two parties is going to have to split apart and form a third party? Well, I, you know, I don't know that. Yeah, you know, if Republicans would act like Republicans, I wouldn't even think about going anywhere else. Um, I just think it's more of a frustration with 
Democrat, Republican, and the dysfunction of both parties in Washington, D.C. Do you think a third party would help or hurt? Uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens. I, uh, I'm i not saying that I would switch to a third party, but I, I think that I bet you there'd be a lot of people that would just because they're upset about what's going on in Washington, D.C. And unfortunately, that reflects on all of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've, I've said this earlier, and I've said it many times before, is, you know, in the state of Iowa, we do get a budget. Uh, we do do what we're, we're supposed to do by the Constitution of the state of Iowa. We, we follow all the rules. And, you know, I think that a large part of that, and this is going to be a rah-rah point about Iowa, I think a large part of that is that we do not have a partisan districting system in Iowa where we don't, we don't have the kinds of uh, uh, – gerrymandering of districts that you see around the country our our voting districts are fairly uniform they're fairly consistent and they stay fairly stable yep. and i think that then leads to electing folks who maybe aren't who are a little bit on the hot seat i would agree more accountable i would agree that there is a pretty clean elections here in the state of Iowa. but i did witness uh, and i could tell you in grinnell college them some things that weren't right when I was running. That wasn't enough to make a oh, difference yeah. between me getting elected to the United States Congress or not. But I certainly think that I would agree with you that we do have a very clean elections compared to a lot of the other states mm -hmm. in the United States. Uh, not saying that we couldn't improve a little bit, but, uh, you know, it's it'll be interesting to see what happens this election. This next election, I think, is going to be surprising if my prediction's right is that there's going to be a lot of incumbents, both Democrat and Republicans, are going to be thrown out of office. And I do agree with you, this shutdown and, and what's going on with uh, the, you know, uh, the debt ceiling is probably going to be old news by then. But there is going to be, there's a dissatisfaction of what's going on. I mean, come on. It's not right that those people that serve us are exempt from all these laws that are going on. It's not right. It doesn't, Democrat, Republican, I don't care what it is. Why would that get blocked? Uh, and I saw how they live, and I saw the benefits they give. I mean, you look at a lot of these people go in as poor or broke or bankrupt, and then they're multimillionaire millionaires after they leave. That is wrong. Well, they're usually multimillionaires be before two years are up. I know what the representatives that well, I can name happened. names, but I'm not gonna. Well, that's that's good. Now, um, we only have what about four minutes left. Um, what now? Do you plan? To, to stay in the Senate for as long as you can, or do you plan on trying to trying to move on, do some good stuff, or is that a question I shouldn't you, ask? You know, no, that's fine. You could ask that. I certainly did really look into running for the United States Senate, uh, and I was on a run, and oh, I decided, wow. hey, I want to spend – I've got a senior, i got a sophomore, and i got a son that's at University of Iowa, and I want to spend time with them because they're gone. If you're asking me if I'll ever run for a higher office, you I bet. certainly would keep my options open. But right now, my number one priority is my family. All right, great. And uh, we'll see what happens. Well, Brad just asked my question much better than I did. Oh, maybe yeah? That, yeah, maybe that's why I have you ask questions. Because really, <laughs> I mean, I put Brad on the spot. I apologize for that. No, nah, that's all right. Um, now, are you going anywhere this this week, Lefty? You doing anything? I got anything? I got nothing on the calendar. I'm looking at uh and doing a couple of a few things, but nothing's set in stone. All right, uh, we're going to be back next week. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a couple of uh, of candidates for city council on. Uh, I would like to talk to them, particularly the Shyster lawyers out there, because um, <laughs> we have one sitting here, right, right there. That's right. There, that's right. And uh, we want to thank Brad Zahn for coming in, taking time away from his family to come in and visit us today. It's an honor to be on here. All right. And um, that's it for the show. We'll be back next week. Uh, I want to thank everybody that listened in tonight and all of our sponsors. We'll be back next week on webcast1live.com. Thank you, everybody. Have a safe week. Representative Tom Shaw, and I love these guys, both of them. Love these guys. <laughs> Get over here. Get over here. Love both of them.